So we've done short run costs and we've done long run costs. Now let's bring in revenue to the mix. Okay, and let's see how revenue curves look diagrammatically. But to do so, we need to distinguish between two different types of market structure. Because revenue curves look different in perfect com competition and they look different in imperfect competition. Now what do I mean by that? Well, in perfect competition, these conditions apply. There are homogeneous goods. Okay? All the goods made by firms are exactly the same, identical goods. There's perfect information for both buyers and sellers. There are many buyers and sellers. And there are no barriers to entry. So if firms want to enter the industry, they can at no cost. They can also exit at no cost. Right. That means firms that operate in these types of market structures are price takers. They've got no say over the price they charge of their products. They have to charge at one price. I've assumed that to be one pound here. So why can't they raise their price? Well, if they try to raise their price, there are so many other sellers in the market that consumers will just go to those sellers. They've got perfect information. They'll just switch their consumption very easily. In which case, this firm who's raised their price will lose all their customers. Doesn't make any sense to do so. Similarly, if the firm decides to reduce its price, maybe to 50 pence, Again, it doesn't make any sense, there's perfect information, so sellers will follow them. And then, this firm will just sell exactly the same amount as it did previously, but at lower prices, which will then lower revenues. doesn't make any sense to do that either. Therefore, it sticks to one price, and that's it. No change to that price whatsoever. Let's kind of bring in some quantity values in here. So let's say, at that one price, you have a range of quantity, quantity sold. Okay, so some consumers will buy one, some will buy four, five, etc. at that one price. So now, total revenue, how do we work out total revenue? Total revenue is just the price of a good times the number of those goods you sell. So P times Q, okay, this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay? Average revenue is just your total revenue divided by the quantity. So TI divided by Q, you're going to work out a little trick with this in a second. The TI divided by Q in each case is just going to be 1. And then marginal revenue, marginal revenue is just the extra revenue generated when we sell one extra unit. Okay, so as we increase the number of units sold, how much extra revenue is generated? Again, if you just look carefully, it's one more in each case. Total revenue increases by one in each case. So this one's a very easy one to draw on a diagram. It's just going to be a horizontal line. And that horizontal line tells us the average revenue. It also tells us the marginal revenue. It also tells us the demand. I'll explain why later on. Okay, and that is the price. Okay, and in this case, that price was one pound, wasn't it? The key thing to know is that a firm's demand curve in a perfectly competitive market is going to be perfectly elastic for the reasons we said before. It can't raise its price, it can't reduce its price. Perfectly elastic demand. Okay, let's now drop these assumptions and look at imperfect competition. How do things change in that kind of market structure? Okay. So in imperfectly competitive markets, the assumptions we made, the conditions that were, that were about for perfectly competitive firms are now dropped. Okay, so again, let's just draw a quick table. So again, we're going to have our price, quantity, total revenue, and revenue marginal. So that's right, price, Q, T, R, A, R, and M, R. We're going to have now a range of prices. Now bear in mind, all the conditions we talked about before have been dropped. There are no longer homogeneous goods. A firm can be innovative and produce something that can't be copied. In which case, they're the only seller that actually can make that good. They have control over the supply of that good. They can then determine the price of it. Okay? There isn't perfect information. There may be barriers to entry and exit now. And there aren't many by well, there aren't many sellers certainly. This then makes firms in imperfectly competitive markets price makers. They have control over the prices they can charge. They don't just have to sell at one price. Okay, so let's have a range of prices here. So these are all in pounds. Okay, so let's see, these are all the different prices that an imperfectly competitive firm can price at. Okay, and a range of quantity values too. Again, it makes sense looking at these figures. If a firm can sell at a range of prices, the law of demand will operate. At higher prices, less will be demanded. At lower prices, more will be demanded. We just have a simple law of demand going on here. 
at these range of prices. Let's do the same thing, let's work out total revenues, average revenues and marginal revenues. So total revenue is just going to be price times quantity in each case. So again, these are one pounds. Very simple to follow. Our average revenue, just our total revenue divided by the quantity. Now look at a pattern when we do our, when we do our average revenue. Okay, so it's just going to be those figures there. And our marginal revenue, again, the extra revenue generated when we sell one more unit, which in this case, start at 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 0. I'm going to go to minus figures. That's what it's going to look like. Now, let's see what this looks like on a diagram. What I'm going to do now is not to plot the points. Okay, I'm going to have revenue and price on the y-axis. I'm going to have output on the x-axis. I'm not going to plot the points. I'm just going to give you the shape of the curves. And these shapes will make logical sense. Okay, now, I've just said that we've got a range of prices. And at these range of prices, the law of demand will operate. In which case, okay, our demand curve is just going to be like a normal demand curve. Right, now we worked out from our previous diagram that the demand curve is just the average revenue curve. Right, so, our average revenue curve is just going to look like a normal down sloping demand curve. So, AR is just equal to the demand curve. And also, if you look carefully, our average revenue is also equal to our price. Look at that column, it matches our price column exactly as it did in the previous um, grid. Why is that? Well, we know total revenue is just price times quantity. We also know that average revenue okay, is just total revenue divided by quantity. Break that down further. Total revenue is P times Q, so it's P times Q over Q. All right. Cancel off the Qs, and we're left with P. So we know that average revenue is also the price. Okay? So that is also what the curve tells us. It also tells us the price okay? at different um, levels of output. Okay? So it is also the price. A very useful thing to know is that. Now, why is the average revenue also the demand curve? Well, bear this in mind. If I get rid of this now. Now, we draw demand curves linear. Okay? So when we draw demand curves linear, we're essentially having this equation, aren't we? We're showing at different prices, okay? prices are a function of quantity in our demand equation, okay? but we draw the curves linear. So essentially they follow this very basic relationship. Okay? We know prices are functions of quantities, okay? and given this function of quantity, we can get demand values out. We can get levels of demand based on this equation. Okay, when we look at prices as a function of quantity. Okay, this is a very basic linear equation. We've got our intercept there, we've got a gradient here. And it's minus because there's an inverse relationship between prices and quantities. Now, if we believe that to be the case, if we understand that to be a demand equation, okay, and we also understand that price is our AR, okay, price is average revenue based on what we just derived, well then surely, the average revenue is also equal to this equation, which is our demand equation. If that's the case, well, then average revenue must be demand as well. Okay? If price gives us this demand equation, average revenue also gives us this demand equation. So average revenue is also the demand curve. Okay? So that's why we say AR is equal to D. It's also equal to P based on what we said before. And now if you look at marginal revenue, you can plot the points if you want to, but a marginal revenue is just going to look like this. The key thing to note with marginal revenue is that it's twice as steep as average revenue. I'm going to prove why in a future video. Okay? But logically it makes sense. Because when the firm reduces its price, it doesn't just reduce its price on the extra unit sold at that price. It reduces its price on all previous units sold too. So let's have a look. When the firm reduces its price from £10 to £9, okay, yes it's selling one extra unit, and nine pounds, so there's extra revenue being generated, but it loses one pound worth of revenue on the unit it sold before. 
okay? which means that marginal revenue will always fall at lower prices. And it will fall more and more okay, in proportion to average revenue. The distance will get greater and greater at lower prices. That's why it falls twice as steeply. I can prove that mathematically in the previous video, in a future video. The key thing to draw, the good way to draw it, is to pick the middle point on the x-axis and just draw the marginal revenue to cut at that point. And it can go negative as we've seen here. Another good way to do it is if you wanted to draw an angle okay, up top <coughs> from your AR curve to your y-axis and just bisect it in the middle. That way you're drawing it twice as steep. But roughly as long as it looks twice as steep, that's fine. Okay, and this is what our revenue curves look like in an imperfectly competitive market. So perfect competition, imperfect competition, revenue curves sorted. Okay, make sure you understand those, they're fundamental. See you next time.